Jabari Young covers the Spurs for the Express <laughs> News out in San Antonio. And I can't imagine what it's like out there following this story. But he joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. And uh, welcome aboard, Jabari. How are you? I'm good, guys. How you doing? Thanks for having me. You got it. Um, so uh, about a week ago, it was, okay, Kawhi Leonard decides he doesn't want to play in San Antonio, and he wants to most likely uh, prefers to go to L.A. Kind of give us uh, what happened right after that news kind of got out there. I mean, locally, I mean, everybody was obviously losing their minds. <laughs> you know, uh, Kawhi Leonard is a, he was a top five. NBA player, and it's one that, you know, it's homegrown. It's one that the Spurs took a chance on and drafted, uh, and they developed him, and Kawhi, you know, did his part on the court and behind the scenes to become what he is today, which is why he's eligible for a five-year, $219 million extension. You don't just get that type of uh, money if you're not one of the top uh, players in the NBA, and he's certainly earned that, and so, you know, they're, they're bugging, you know, fans are because they don't want to lose him. And, uh, you know, there's just, fans are frustrated because they feel maybe Kawhi's, you know, betrayed him. And then you have the fans who are wondering just, you know, why is all this even going down in the first place? You know, he was supposed to be the guy who took the baton from Tim Duncan and run for another 10 to 15 years and maybe try to get a couple more championships. So you can understand the frustration. You know, you can understand people are angry, um, you know, maybe a little bit over the top, like burning jerseys and stuff like that. I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but uh, I understand it. You know what I mean? And, and you just hope that it's still time for them to, uh, you know, resolve this thing and, and maybe try to, you know, let the frustrations kind of calm down a little bit and see if they can come to the table and talk about it before they just sever the relationship and, and go their separate ways. Yeah, this just seems all so bizarre that, you know, he expressed or somebody expressed that he would like to get out of there, but he is not. It almost seems like the drunk uncle stepped in and like, the, he, you know, he promised his dad, I'll take care of him and I'll make sure he doesn't get taken advantage of. And it's like, ooh, I'll step in and get him out of this situation. It almost seems like there's so much conjecture uh, surrounding him that really doesn't sound like it would come from him himself. I mean, you would know him better than we would, obviously. Yeah, see, that's, a, that's a false narrative. Um, Kawhi Leonard just speaks for himself, and he may relay messages through, uh, and it may be filtered through other people, but this ain't nothing that's new. Kawhi Leonard's was going on 72 hours now, plus some. If he realized that there was a trade that, you know, he didn't, it didn't come from his mouth. The first thing you do is you're getting on the phone or you're getting on and you're telling everybody, no, this ain't, this is false. I'm going to my Twitter page, which he hardly uses. This is not false. This is false information. So, um, you know, that, that, that message is being filtered, you know, and I, I, I know his, uh, his reps very well. And I know that that's not something that, that's not a card they would just play without making sure that that's what he wanted. Um, and right now I'm sure that, you know, that they're trying to figure out if that's something that's even feasible because remember something, the Spurs still have leverage. He's under contract. They don't have to trade him. Mm -hmm. They can say, listen, you, you're coming to play for us. You, we'll see you in training camp. We're not trading you. We'll try to fix this thing as the, as time goes on. If you're Kawhi Leonard, do you really want to sit out another year without playing basketball? You know, then your market value definitely gets diminished because who's going to offer you that money if you haven't played in almost two years uh, or and, and played more than nine games in almost two years? Uh, and, and also, you won't be eligible for that five-year, two hundred nineteen million extension because if they don't give it to him now, he has to then requalify for that. Okay, for the team, and if he goes somewhere else, then he has to that 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 money's not coming for another uh, uh, five plus years. So. You know, it, it's one of those things where both parties have leverage. And if you're Kawhi, you played your hand, and you, you'll see how it works out. And like I said, the Spurs still have time. they got time. They're not, they're not, I'm sure this is not an organization that's not going to rush. You don't win five championships and make it to the postseason 20-plus years under Greg Popovich regime by doing things, you know, and, and not uh, thinking things through. So uh, it's still time, and there's still plan A. And plan A, to me, should be working it out with your superstar player before you go to plan B. Jabari Young with us, and if they do go to that plan B, Jabari, you'd have to think that they're not going to just roll over and trade him to where he wants to go. They're going to get the best deal that they can for the Spurs in that situation. Absolutely, and that best deal might be where he wants to go, and that's the Lakers. You know, if, if Magic Johnson is coming up and he's saying, hey, my roster is open to you, you can have Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma. You can have our first-round picks. You know what I mean? And by the way, Pop, if you want some wine, it's on the house for the rest of your life. Every time you come to L.A., <laughs> I will see to it. Okay? You have never have to pay for movie passes. You want to go to Universal Studios. Hollywood was all on us. You give us Kawhi. You know, and that might be a good deal. Listen, you're talking about Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram, two young players that have a lot of potential, and then you compare them and build them 
uh, with your young guy that you have down here, and Dejounte Murray, who just made the second team, you know, all defensive team, uh, second team. So you know, it's like they have some options that they can look at, but at the same time, if LA is offering you the best option, you don't just ignore it. That's doing a disservice to your franchise. You're trying to set this team up for another few, uh, you know, another decade long run. And if that, if that starts now by building young assets, then the Lakers have a lot of them, minus Lonzo Ball, because I'm sure they don't want nothing to do with LeVar. So Kawhi Leonard reportedly has drawn his line in the sand, but do you still think that he'll sit down and meet with Pop? Will he sit down and meet with the Spurs GM to, to have one face-to-face conversation, or is that moment gone? I don't think it's gone. It's not gone because, you know, I don't think Greg Popovich will let it go. You know, and, and that's something where as if, you know, who's to say that they're not meeting right now behind closed doors that, you know, nobody can take any Twitter pictures or do anything like that. You 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 meet privately. I mean, listen, the, the meeting between LaMarcus Aldridge and Greg Popovich, that happened last summer. We didn't know about it until October or September. You know, so, I mean, they they, they can definitely hide this thing and get things resolved. But the bottom line is that if Kawhi Leonard is, come, is on this roster, come even in August, okay, in September, you know that he ain't going nowhere. Uh, you know that something would have been worked out. So um, I think that they're going to try their best uh, and even say, listen, We'll trade you, but you got to give us an opportunity to talk first. And if you we you give us an opportunity to talk first, and we still can't come to some type of you know resolution, and we still can't figure it out, then we will honor your wishes. But we're not doing anything until we talk to you first. You don't just say you know a player says I want to be traded. You don't talk to him. You don't, you don't try to work it out. You know you, you you come and you meet and you try to figure it out. Kobe Bryant wanted to be traded in 2007. Did the Lakers do it? Hell no. They, they wasn't <laughs> going to trade him. You know you're not. We're not trading you. We're going to work this thing out. So. It can be done. You know, it, it can be done. And like I said, that's plan A for the Spurs and plan B. If, if nothing happens, then you got to take care of business. Jabari Young covers the Spurs. Uh, he joins us here on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. Now, I mean, number one, okay, real quick. Do you anticipate if something gets done, it happens at the draft? And if it's not at the draft, then they've kind of made it through phase one to try to work this out? I mean, you know, you don't look at it from a phase point of view. I don't really anticipate anything happening before the draft unless, you know, they meet between For now instance, and then. Jabari, like, okay, the Sixers have picked 10. If they've tried it, there's been a lot of talk, like, Fultz, 10, Rocco, Sarich. So, like, if they were, obviously, draft night, pick 10, would would that be of interest to the Spurs? Or do you think that's just ridiculous to even throw that kind of uh, deal their way? Well, I mean, listen, I'm not touching Markel Fultz until I'm sure that whatever problems he's just coming off of are resolved and I'm not going to get inherit that. And Greg Popovich and Brett Brown, listen, Greg Popovich has a great source within the Sixers. He knows Brett Brown. That was his guy. That was his ex-assistant coach. So if, if, if that's, you know, the route that you want to take, I'm getting all the information I can on Markel Fultz to see, uh, you know, what his issue was and if it's, if it's fixed. You know, we obviously know he's a talented individual. Markel Fultz can ball. Um, from the little flashes that we've seen of him on the court, he, you know, he he was pretty good. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to come in and have that issue come down here, and all of a sudden, Markel Fultz again is forgetting how to shoot. You know, the Spurs don't have that type of thing. We're giving you Kawhi Leonard. We want to make sure any assets you're giving us back, we're going to have for the foreseeable future for a long time, and they're going to develop into something special as well. So I'm not sure that the Sixers can just offer that package without the Spurs doing their research. But you know, I'm sure the Sixers are going to make their phone calls and do their due diligence. I just don't think the Spurs are going to rush to do anything. Okay, I really don't because guess what? Whoever you take in that draft, if they wanted them. Uh, they'll just make that uh, that person a part of the deal, similar to what Cleveland did mm-hmm. when they got back with Brian James. Andrew Wiggins was but on a Cleveland roster for about an hour, and then he got traded because you know the the, the Cavaliers would get something back in Kevin Love. So you know, like I said, I don't think they're gonna rush. I think they're gonna take their time. I think they're gonna again work and try to make sure that they can get Plan A executed, which is meeting with their superstar player, which is resolving the issue, which is going back to competing for championships. Jabari Young with us, and I saw a tweet you had, Jabari, where you said that Popovich has the power to fix it, but you also said in that tweet, two straight summers now of star players on the Spurs asking for a trade, and you wrote, what does that say? So I'll ask you, what does that say? I mean, it says that, you know, post Tim Duncan era, that the Spurs are now part of the NBA. Yeah, after 20 years, you know, <laughs> is, is, is it funny that, you know, this, all this is happening when Tim Duncan is gone? You know, it's what, two, three, two, three, three years that he's not here anymore? You know what I mean? So, you know, once 21 walks out the door, that's a big part of your culture. Greg Popovich is phenomenal. Great individual. Head, you know, one of the best head coaches ever done in the NBA. But that doesn't mean that his way is always the, the way that's easy. Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult to play for him because he's going to tell it like it is. It's going to be his way or the highway. So 
everybody can't adapt to that. When you have a guy like Tim Duncan in the locker room, guess what? He can make sure all the soldiers are in line because he's in line, and everybody's going to fall, and they're going to get in back of him. So without Tim Duncan around now, more personalities start to come out. More people start to say, hey, you know what? I'm not really a fan of this. Maybe it looked good when I was you know, on another team and I was a big minor Spurs way, but I'm not necessarily a big fan of this. So now this is the second straight summer that something like this is happening. If you're the Spurs, maybe you got to go back and say, okay, you know what? What are we not doing correctly? And probably was even admitted, hey, I tried to change the Marcus Aldridge into something that he wasn't, and that was my mistake, and now we're on the same page. With Kawhi Leonard, maybe it was for some issues going on behind the scenes as well as publicly, a couple of jabs being taken, that maybe they have to be more careful if they do save this relationship to not go that route again because you know Kawhi didn't appreciate that. Okay, so it's like, you know, you just got to make sure that you organizationally, one of the top franchises we obviously know throughout of all the sports, have done it well for 20 years. But a big part of that is because they had 21 there backing everything up. They had David Robinson there backing everything up. Those two guys are not there anymore. They're not in that locker room anymore. They might be around a franchise, but they're not in that locker room anymore. It's a completely different era. you got to make sure that moving forward that you can handle today's NBA, which the players are dictating. And then, of course, you asked Jabari, how long will Greg Popovich stay around? Because you mentioned Tim Duncan. There were rumors that Pop was going to retire with Tim Duncan. And then if Kawhi Leonard's not around, if he's not in a Spurs uniform next season, how long does Greg Popovich stay as the head coach? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, and at this point, I think he's pretty much uh, – he, he can walk out whenever he wants to walk out. He's earned that much. You know, five championships and, again, 20-plus postseason victories. Um, you know, one of the top uh, coaches of all time in, in the winning department. So um, he's kind of earned that right to go out when he, he goes out. But, you know, with that said, people are looking at that 2020 date when the Olympics come up where he's, you know, he's the head, he's the men's basketball coach. Um, and they're looking at that date and saying, hey, you know what? We can see that if he was going to walk away, it would be around this time because you're talking about so much duty with the Olympic team as well as, you know, grinding through an 82-game NBA schedule plus some more in the postseason. Uh, and then having to go through the Olympics. That's a lot of basketball, a lot of coaching. Uh, and at, at Greg Popovich, you know, who knows if he has that amount of energy to do it. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, you know, if, if, if people had to pick a date, I think it would be that. But, again, he can go out whenever he wants to. And right now, he has so much energy, so much left, that uh, I, I just can't see it being in the next two years. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, we're talking with Jabari Young here on the uh, Sports Bash Boardwalk Honda Hotline, who uh, covers the Spurs in this, you know, bizarre story. So, with the Kawhi letter, is this about exposure and wanting to be in a bigger market, um, or is this about lack of trust and having their feelings hurt? Like, where did this kind of come from? It seems like there's a couple different stories. It's like a tangled mess. I mean, I don't think I don't really buy the lack of exposure argument because in today's social media world, with the NBA being is one of the most popular leagues ever, right? Right now, I mean. Your your market right now is whatever you make it. I mean, come on. Giannis Antetokounmpo is one of the best players in the NBA. He's in Milwaukee. He, he ain't suffering. You know, he, the market is coming to him. You know, so um, I know San Antonio is not the biggest market in the world, but listen, Tim Duncan had a sneaker contract when he was down here. He was with Adidas. You know, guys do get market. Uh, they do get exposure. It's just maybe not the best. And believe me, what better exposure can you get? Than hoisting an NBA trophy when it's all said and done. A lot, a lot of people knew who Kawhi Leonard was, but guess what? After he won the NBA Finals MVP in 2014, you knew his name, and you know why you knew his name because the Spurs won. So, uh, if, if it is about going to a bigger market, or in his case, going to LA, my only thing would just be very careful what you ask for because LA is a different animal. It's not like you're just going out there to play for the Lakers or the Clippers. When you go out there, you got to understand. You're getting the paparazzi, you're getting the TMZs of the world, you're getting the photos, you're getting the you're getting all that. Kawhi Leonard won't be able to go into a Starbucks, eat a cup of water right. without cameras outside. Okay, you could do that in places maybe like a, a San Antonio, or even Philly. You know, Philly is not is a big market, but we, people mind their business. As long as you plan and doing what you're supposed to do on the court, they mind their business. So. You know, I, I don't think the big market thing of it is. I just think that maybe they feel like some loyalty and some trust was, you know, uh, lost in the last few months. And, and, and what way to get that back is to sit in the room and try, and try to talk about it and grow the relationship again. But if you feel that, you know, that, no, I don't even want to go that route because once you once you lose trust in me and I'm getting it back, then, again, that's something that's completely different. But it's his career. You know, he's going to do what he wants to do with it. He just hope that, you know, that grass is green on the other side because if it's not and he goes somewhere and, and it doesn't do as well, then people are going to look and say, I told you so. You should right. stay with the Spurs. So it's going to be different. So it's just like I said before, plan A is still there. they got to try to find a way to make it work. Now there's some reports that suggest that they don't want to trade him to the West. And I can't imagine, and you know this organization as well as anyone, that 
They're just going to say to the Lakers, yeah, we'll take Luol Dang, sure. Give us that lousy contract so that we can help you out here. You know, like, I, I feel that there are teams that have better packages that they can throw at the Spurs than L.A. So I guess the question would be, in the end, do you see him saying, you know what? I'll just finish here and then make a decision on where, where I want to go next season. Or is it going to be that Indiana-Paul George thing where the Spurs just say, you know what, we're not dealing with this. Somebody else take it and let him let them deal with him next year. Well, see, I think the Indiana thing was totally different because up until that point, you know, I don't think Indiana had a lot of packages that, that they wanted to execute. You know what I mean? It was the simple fact that, uh, Oklahoma came at them with a, a great offer, and we obviously know now that Indiana won that deal, unless Paul George resigns with the Oklahoma City Thunder, and even still, the Pacers won that deal. They went deeper in the playoffs. They, or Victor Oladipo was tough. You know what I mean? I mean, the, 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 the man made an all-star team. I mean, they, they kind of created their own star in Victor Oladipo, so Indiana kind of made out really well with that deal, but the reason why the Thunder did it was because they were trying to convince Russell Westbrook to stay in the house. You just lose Kevin Durant, and, and the whole thing, and the trades you did make is not really going through you're trying to keep your star player happy and in-house. So you go make that deal for Paul George, even if that means giving up a Sabonis and a Victor Oladipo of the world, because those are two solid young players uh, that the Pacers receive. So I don't think it's of that niche because the Spurs will be the, they'll be fine, you know, with and without Kawhi Leonard. Um, they'll, they'll grow. They'll get better. They may not be as good now, but, you know, we obviously know that they have a great development core in place. But um, I don't think they'll rush. Like I said, I don't think they'll rush. I think they'll take their time. And the reason why you're buying yourself time is also to try to convince your superstar player to stay in the house. And the more time that you can uh, save, the better the chances are that you can save the relationship. I know uh, it's Thursday night, but do you anticipate Kawhi Leonard will be a spur on Friday? Yeah, I do. Unless something phenomenal happens, I do. But with that said, it's the NBA. I wasn't expecting to receive a phone call on Friday, and that ruined my whole Friday. And, you know, (laughs) I'm I'm stuck, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, but you got to also anticipate things like that. Uh, But unless it's something that's really, really – uh, big, uh, and unless over the next 48 hours they feel like their relationship just has hit a hope, they can't continue because they've already spoken to Kawhi and he's expressed no desire to remain there or even a desire to meet with them, then maybe. But right now, I just can't see it because I think the team is going to take their time uh, re- in trying to handle this uh, because, again, this ain't no slouch, man. This is huh. Kawhi Leonard. This is a top five NBA player. You just don't give up players like that because you have a difference of opinion. You sit down and you try to work it out Uh, and you see if you can save this thing. Now, there's been reports that the Lakers, Celtics, and Sixers are all interest among other teams, but do you think Philadelphia is a legitimate contender for his services? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got a Ben Simmons, and if he can develop a a mid-range jumper, I'm not even talking about a three, just a mid-range jumper, uh, I mean, he automatically is boost. uh, You know, he's a better player because of it. Um, Joel Embiid has proven what he can do. I mean, the man is one of the you know top big men in the league right now. And, you know, uh, Brett Brown is there. Kawhi and, and Brett Brown, they go back from their days with both with the Spurs. I know that Kawhi has a pretty good relationship with Brett. Uh, so, I mean, they'd definitely be contenders. I mean, you're talking about adding a top five player to a team that, you know, made it to the second round of the playoffs. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're getting something. You're getting somewhere, okay? And, and you add him to the mix, now you got a go-to guy. You know, you want to double Joel Embiid? Oh, okay. Well, you're leaving Kawhi in a one-on-one. What are you, crazy? You want to double Kawhi? You're leaving Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid one-on-one? Are you crazy? And then you got Ben Simmons who can, you know, has great court vision. Automatically, that team is uh, enhanced. And you can see them making it to the Eastern Conference Finals or at least giving the Boston Celtics who you know are going to be there um, all they can handle. And, and even the Cleveland Cavaliers if LeBron James stays. So Philadelphia automatically gets boost to the, the top three teams, if not the best team in the Eastern Conference, when you're adding a guy like Kawhi Leonard. Jabari Young way out there in San Antonio, uniquely qualified to comment on Kawhi Leonard, but Philly made and Temple made. You and I uh, both a couple of Temple Owls, Jabari Young. You know your Philly Absolutely, basketball. Man. You know your Temple Owls. Absolutely, man. I love it out there. I miss it out there. But, you know, man, San Antonio is treating me pretty good, man. I can't lie. But I do, <laughs> when I go back to Philly, I mean, you know, it's, it's not the same driving to those, those, those Temple because there's so much construction going on over there. But at least they still got the Temple, the, the wind tunnel. People say they go to Temple. I say, if you don't know about the wind tunnel, then you ain't really go to Temple. And that thing, is just, it was crucial, man. But, um, you know, always the Philly made and, and Temple made. That's just that's in my heart. 
Well, Jabari, we appreciate a couple minutes. I know this story is uh, is going to be going on for a little while here, so uh, we'll be uh, keeping tabs uh, on the Twitter account, and uh, if something happens, we'll hope to catch up with you again. All right, guys. Thanks again for having me.